all evil. Now, what's evil? Evil isn't necessarily all sin, just to be clear. Evil, in, in a biblical definition of evil, is when you do harm to someone else. Evil is like inflicting harm upon somebody. In the Bible, oftentimes, and sometimes evil isn't always sin. Now, what we're talking about is all, we're, we're, we're referring to sins and what this discussion is. But just to, to kind of help make it a little bit more clear what evil is, God brings evil on people sometimes, but we know that God doesn't sin. In the Old Testament, you'll see oftentimes that he was going to bring evil upon a people because they were going to be judged. So the evil that he thought to do unto Nineveh, for example, which is destroy Nineveh. So when you read in the book of, uh, of Jonah, the message is being preached, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That was the message from God that, that uh, Jonah needed to preach unto the people there. But then what happened is the people received the message. They repented. They got right with God. And then God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do to them. So instead of bringing that judgment and destroying their city, because they got right with them, he changed his mind and said, okay, we won't do this anymore. So he didn't inflict evil upon them. If someone's carrying out the death sentence, for example, in a, in a righteous way, in, in the proper manner, where someone is guilty of a crime punishable by death, that person who, who does the execution does evil on that person, but they're not sinning. They're carrying out a sentence that's righteous and, and even commanded by God if it's done right. And, uh, and it's not a sin, but it is evil. So evil in this sense is, this is definitely referring to the, to the evil sins. But what would be an evil sin? It's when you're doing harm to someone. Think of, of, of sins where you're, you're hurting someone, like physically harming someone or doing things like, uh, um, you know, when, when a man forces a woman or something like that, you're, doing, you're inflicting evil on somebody. When, when you, um, you know, hurt someone, injure someone, things like that. Those types of sins where you are taking advantage of someone and hurting other people, the Bible's saying the, the source of that, the root of that is the love of money. It's a greed. We use the word greed more than anything else. See, I've heard, you know, the world gets this wrong. They say, oh, having money is a sin. They think like having money is a sin. The Bible doesn't teach that having money is a sin. The Bible doesn't teach that working a job and receiving money is a sin. That's, that's not the sin. The sin is when you're loving that money. When that's what your heart and your desire is after that money. We all need money to survive. Everyone needs money to survive. But when you, when you turn that money, especially when you turn that money into your God, that's when you have a problem. The Bible teaches us the attitude that we need to have. Look at verse number six in 1 Timothy chapter six. The Bible says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So being godly, doing right things, and just being content with where you're at, whatever, whatever that may be, Wherever you are in life, just being content, being satisfied, being happy with where God has you. Whether you have a lot physically or have a lot uh, or have a little physically, like the, you know, physical riches, house, whatever. If you can just live right and do good and just be content with where you're at, the Bible says that's great gain. That is, a, that is a great gain for you to have that attitude. Way more of a gain than, any, than winning the, the lottery, right? It's way more gain to be just living right and just be content with what you have. Because people that aren't content, you're never going to be content. You're never going to be satisfied. When you love money, the thing is, the love of money, you can never fill that. Because no matter how much you get, when you love money, you're always just going to want more. And that void is never going to be filled. And people who love money are miserable people. 